game week, you know, obviously, uh, you know, Duke coming into town, um, really done a great job the past two weeks, first against Boston College and against Tulane, you know, really found their groove offensively, not only passing traditionally, they've been a real good passing team, but they've done a real good job running the football. You know, I actually had ran for five touchdowns this past week, so, and defensively they've taken a, a tremendous uh, step in towards to become a real good defense, very physical at the point of attack, and uh, they held, I know, Tulane less than three yards a pop in the running game, and, and I don't think they, uh, they actually scored a touchdown until the fourth quarter. So almost uh, two full games without allowing a touchdown. I think a total of six quarters without allowing a touchdown. So they're playing real good defense. I know they suffered a, uh, you know, a pretty significant injury at defense. I mean, a good football player, real, real good one. But uh, they have a lot of good ones. You know, they're good at safety. Uh, they're good at linebacker. You know, obviously Austin Gamble, local guy here. Lots of local guys. Connor Vernon, you know, uh, Donovan Barner. Um, guys right down the street, teammates with Darren Mallory. So. Um, a real good football team coming into town, uh, again, representing the ACC and another opportunity for us to match up against a BCS conference and a BCS opponent. Uh, can you just talk a little bit about how your, how your past defense is preparing for um, Kenny Renfrey, or Renfrey, he uh, 72.9% um, pass rating right now. Yeah. He's as good as it gets now, and he's a big guy, so he sees the field really, really well. Uh, his offensive line does a great job of protecting him also. Uh, what he does, you know, and you mentioned the completion percentage, uh, it's, he throws a very catchable ball. He gives his receivers a chance every time he puts a ball in the air, which is obviously very, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. And them setting up the pass recently with the way they've been running the football also helps their offense. Mm -hmm. You know, we uh, obviously you're, you're stressing, you know, the things that you do in coverage, how to do them better. But you certainly have to do things to somehow affect him because he is that good. If you just sit back and wait all day, he can pick you apart. And if you bring pressure all the time, you know, he could pick you apart as well. So uh, the details of prepping for him are obviously critical and very important. Our guys have been spending a lot of extra time, you know, coming up with a game plan to try and slow them down and again have success on Saturday. I was thinking that he was a <clears throat> pretty decent runner, but I think he's negative yardage stats because he's the kind of guy who could just escape or something he can, like that. He can. He's a, he just has great pocket presence. Again, he's so big. He just sees it and he feels it too. And he's not a guy you can kind of just, you know, tap up his ankle and bring him down and try to arm tackle him. He's a big guy. You know, he's 6'5", maybe a little bit more. Um, and he is mobile. You know, he can, he can make yards happen in the running game. But, you know, if he has to get out of there and make a play, he can make it happen as well. So uh, he's about as good of a quarterback as you'll see. Um, you, uh, you had some, I guess, some challenges last week with, with the passing game. He's, he's known as an offensive guru kind of guy where he's got a lot of reports and stuff like that. So what kind of challenges are you expecting and how are you preparing for that so that it's not a repeat of last week? Sure. Well, the issues last week, you know, it's a little bit of both. Two things. Number one, you got to give them credit for making a play in the face of pressure. You know, if it's pressure, it's, you know, if you're going to hit home and it's going to be successful, it's a good thing. But if you're able to get a pass off and make a play, Obviously, it uh, it hurts, and uh, we got hit by a couple of plays last week in pressure situation that you know we felt we could have had a chance for success. Uh, coach Cutcliffe is uh, not only a passing or easy as an offensive coach, you know, overall just an excellent offensive coach. And um, regardless of what you're playing, whether you're playing his own man, uh, whether you're bringing pressure, playing base defense, dropping eight, playing cover two, uh, he does a very good job at prepping uh, his offensive players to take what the defense gives you and then also find the shot and take it to make sure that if you're overcrowding the box to get you to back off. So uh, he presents a tremendous challenge, you know, as a coach uh, schematically and not, not only that, but the athletes that they have. I mean, they have real good wide receivers, uh, real good. They're fast, they're explosive, they catch the ball. Uh, again, for our guys, a uh, great opportunity to match up against a team that is really, really good uh, and has had great success against two real good opponents the past couple of weeks. I think your player could handle last week. I lost. <clears throat> Excuse me. What's well, wrong about the program? Well, you handle it like a, <laughs> you know, absolutely like, like a young man on the way to being a grown man should handle it. You know, football is that kind of a thing where not every Saturday is going to be yours. And when you're doing the right things and you're prepping hard, if things don't go the right way, you keep doing the right things, you're just doing better. You know, uh, you do it with more detail and you keep pressing and you keep pushing each other and sticking together to make sure you can't take that next step. Um, and our guys, obviously, they've invested a lot of time in the season. We've gotten off to a real good start. Uh, we want to win every single game, obviously, uh, because it didn't work out our way. Um, 
a lot of good comes of that sometimes. And I think our guys are mature enough and uh, have handled it extremely well by putting in a, a couple of days of real good practices and looking forward to playing on Saturday. Did this game kind of have the feel of how it was when you lost to Florida Atlantic last year? And it kind of like a bounce back game now coming into this game? I think comparing things like that, uh, they've never just made much sense to me. Mm -hmm. You know, football is a game, and in our case, it's always going to be a one game. Uh, type of season, you know, we've always been a, of the model of being one and zero week in and week out. So even as much success we had in week one or week two, or week three, once we got back in the building the next day, that was put aside, you know, and going forward because it can't help you going forward, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of the actual plays of that game, the lessons learned, good and bad, absolutely, you carry them, you apply them. So um, you know, this past weekend was our first loss. Mm -hmm. Whatever we did learn from the film, we have applied it to practice, you know, to what we're doing from a regimen and from a schematic standpoint, and we'll get better from it, you know. Uh, certainly, we're, we're off to the best start the program's ever been off to, and we want to keep getting better. There's no uh, signs of anyone being content. Uh, I don't think uh, anyone's ready to look at uh, the total picture till the end of the season, and between now and then, there's a lot of time, and we're always going to take it one week at a time, always. How's West been progressing in practice? Been well. Been well. He took half the snaps today. He looked good. Um, I'd say he's probably at 90%. You know, we expect to be at 95, 100 by tomorrow and Thursday. Uh, he's been good. You know, um, T.Y.'s been coming along. Obviously, last game he was limited in what he did. You know, obviously didn't have to, couldn't get him to open up and run and stretch the field like he typically does. Uh, but he did provide a couple catches for us and a little bit of a spark. So he did what he could. Um, you know, we got a couple guys banged up. Chuck Grace obviously is out, you know, for a couple weeks. Uh, Spraying knee pretty good. And there's a couple other, you know, bumps and bruises that we're dealing with. But um, it's that time of year where things do happen. You know, teams are, are losing guys left and right. And, you know, in the course of a game, we lost our, our best player and we lost our quarterback in the first quarter. You know, some guys stepped up and did a pretty nice job. You know, they've uh, they certainly won the confidence of their teammates. With more reps and more practice, those guys are going to be real good football players. And uh, Glenn Coleman, is he getting getting better? He's going to be out for a couple weeks. Okay. He is. He is. He has a pretty good uh, sprain of his AC joint and his shoulder. Um, you know, he toughed it out throughout the course of the game, you know, which I give him a lot of credit for. A tremendous amount of respect for everything Glenn's done since he's arrived here at FIU. Mm -hmm. And getting better. Starting to be a guy that we, you know, feel very good about getting the ball to. Um, but he did, he did sprain his shoulder, and he's going to have to sit out a couple weeks. Just talking about their running game, I mean, they have a great offensive game in the passing game, but their running game, too, with Thompson, he has 252 yeah. yards on the year and two touchdowns. So. He got rolling last week. Yeah. You know, they fed him the ball. I know whenever a coach calls a fourth and one play and he gives the ball to a certain guy, there's a lot of trust and faith in that guy. He ripped off, I think, 12, 13 yards on a fourth and one carry early in the game uh, to get him off to a 21 nothing lead in the first quarter. So he's a big guy. I mean, he's 215, 220 pounds, uh, and he's become the guy they want to pound the ball with. Which for them, you know, and, and for any coach, when you find a guy that can do that for you, it changes what you can do offensively. It changes how defenses have to prepare for you. So, I think uh, people, I think you know, uh, I'm sure that uh, anyone that faces Duke when they watch film, uh, it's not a one-dimensional offense. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and their defense is not only complex; it's physical. You know, they become a very physical football team. So, you're looking at a complete team that's coming here on Saturday. And then. Uh, what what they do on fourth down? They're they're six or ten on um, converting on fourth down. Just talk about having to you know stop them on that. Well, again, it yeah. depends what kind of fourth down it is. It could yeah. be fourth and short or fourth and long. So depending on personnel, you know, the time in the the half or the game, you know, whatever it may be, situation, field position, obviously it commands what your or predicates what your your response will be in terms of personnel and play call. Mm -hmm. Coach, how has Kedrick Rose matured into the leading role of this rushing attack? week in and week out. Yeah, he's done a real good job. And, uh, you know, that being said, we want to continue playing more guys as well. But uh, last week he got so hot, you know, I mean, he just, he was breaking tackles. He was making people miss. Uh, you know, you can't, you know, can't deny that. When a guy gets hot like that, you want to feed him the ball. You, know, you really do. It showed up in the spring. Uh, we knew when we, uh, when he signed with us in recruiting, we found ourselves a real special one. His body just keeps developing. You know, he's approaching 200 pounds. He's developed an extra gear. Uh, he broke a big run last Saturday, which we haven't had in a long time here at FIU. And uh, I think he's only scratching the surface. I, I really do.